We want to go to Kentucky now tonight. Absolutely devastating as you've been watching on nightly mm. news and here on our air. Governor Bashir's day saying 74 people are dead, more than 100 still missing. We've shown you videos of pictures from there. Some of the most harrowing stories are coming from that candle factory, Marius. A worker who survived the collapse is being treated tonight at Vanderbilt, and he's questioning why the plant was open that night in the first place. Now, he spoke today with our chief investigative reporter, Jeremy Finley. And Jeremy, He's not the only one asking that question. That's right. So the brother of a woman who died when that factory collapsed tells News 4 investigates that there were days of advanced warnings that severe weather would hit that region. Yet the factory that does not have a storm shelter remained open that night. I'm trapped under this. I'm going to tell everybody I love y'all. That's Isaiah Holt making videos beneath the debris of the collapsed Mayfield Consumer Products plant. His brother, a fellow worker, was beside him. So I couldn't move. Now I'm worried about my brother because he's like, I got something on my neck. I can't breathe. So I'm just like, bro, just stay calm. Speaking to News 4 Investigates from his Vanderbilt hospital room, Holt keeps asking, why were he, his brother, and fellow employees still working the night of the tornado? We shouldn't have been at work. How many warnings do you need? They've been forecasting these storms and the severity of them for several days. Daryl Johnson is asking the question too. His sister, Janine, was killed when the factory collapsed. It's too late for excuses. It's too late for excuses. While severe weather had been forecast for days, listen, our NBC affiliate in Paducah, Kentucky, warned Graves County, where Mayfield stands, that they were in the path of the storm 40 minutes before the tornado hit. If you live in central Graves County, you've got 20, 30 minutes. The forecast obviously was pretty grim that night. News 4 Investigates reached the plant spokesman by phone. Why was the factory even open that night? It, this was really an unprecedented uh, act of God. If we had known that this was going to happen, would we have uh, protected our employees in different ways? Yes. Holt says after the first storm system moved through around 5 o'clock, some people wanted to leave and were told to return to work after it had moved through. They don't care about us. I should have sent us home after the first one. But spokesman Bob Ferguson says the company has a COVID policy that anyone can leave at any time, and that in both storms, employees were given ample time to move to a central hallway. It would be inaccurate to say that employees uh, were not uh, given warning. NBC News is reporting that several employees were told if they left, they could lose their jobs. Isaiah Holt did not tell us that, but we did ask the company spokesman, and again, he says that isn't true. Tracy? Oh, disturbing. All mm. right, Jeremy Finley reporting tonight.